Good evening, I'm Pia Ontiveros. This is News.ph, but it's not politics as usual. Our special relations with the United States of America have entered a unique period. We are no longer a colony of the U.S., that having been settled a long time ago in 1946. But we are also no longer in the most special relationship, as it were, when we were still hosting Clark Air Base and Zubik Naval Base. No, the U.S. doesn't want bases, just a little more than the foothold it's gained with the Visiting Forces Agreement signed more than a decade ago. Especially now that it's making a pivot towards Asia after spending and training much of its time and effort in other parts of the world. Philippine-American ties have come a long way, so it's time to check in with, right before he leaves, U.S. Ambassador to the Philippines, Harry Thomas. Good evening, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you for joining us. Magandang gabi, Pia. Thank Magandang gabi po. <laughs> now I'll have to remember my Tagalog. <laughs> well, Mr. Ambassador, I love your socks. Well, thank you. I try to wear different socks every day. Different. Uh, my staff told me I was too boring. So really? I so now you wear... Color, different color every day. Yeah, different color. But it's not just the color. It's like you have giraffes on your socks. A little, a little uh, humor, uh -huh. right? A conversation piece. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Well, that's a good way to start the, the show tonight. Uh, okay. When are you leaving? Uh, not that I want you to go. <laughs> the first ask question. Many do want me to go. <laughs> yeah, really? Like who? <laughs> I'll be leaving in about three or four weeks. Three or four weeks? You, uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Ambassador Goldberg, my good friend, who will be mm -hmm. my successor, mm -hmm. uh, will have to be confirmed by the U.S. Senate. We have a similar process to uh, yeah. the Philippines. And uh, yeah. that w should happen sometime in September. September. So that's like just about in a month's time. Yes, yes. That's yeah. quite... Uh, mabilis, no? Yes, yes. Yeah, because mabilis. it took like you, f it took like four months for you, four or five months before you yes, got confirmed. Yes, yes, yes. Well, mm -hmm. you have to respect the Senate and their calendar, and mm -hmm. when they would uh, bring you here. But as I've told Phil, it always works out. It'll mm -hmm. work out for him as it, it did for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can we talk about him, about Mr. Goldberg? Sure. Um, he is Assistant Secretary of State for Intelligence and Research. Yes. Uh, former, State uh, former State Department official was quoted as saying that um, uh, as uh, head of the Bureau of Intelligence and Research, mm -hmm. Goldberg possesses technical knowledge that could be useful to U.S. efforts in assisting the Philippines mm -hmm. counter terrorism and counter insurgency efforts. Yes. Um, this is interesting because terrorism and insurgency, of course, are very major mm. concerns here in this country. How exactly will he be helpful? Can you give well, us more details? I don't want to prescribe his job. That will be <laughs> up to him. Yeah. But I think one of the things he will look at is uh, our relationship, our military and intelligence relationship. You know, we have the Joint Special Operations Task Force Philippines that mm -hmm. has been here uh, training and assisting uh, the PNP and the AFP since 2002 on a rotational basis. I think he'll look at that. Mm -hmm. uh, he will also uh, look at other areas of the Philippines that uh, might be havens for terrorists, uh, mm -hmm. but he will do that uh, in strong consultation with the Philippine Secretaries of Defense, uh, Foreign Affairs, and of course, uh, National Security Advisor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the other week, we, you mentioned the Joint Special Operation Task, Operations oh. Task Force that was here since yes. 2002. The other week, negotiations began mm -hmm. um, between our two countries for a framework agreement on an increased rotational presence for American troops here in the Philippines. Um, and uh, your Defense Secretary, Chuck mm -hmm. Hagel, is scheduled to be here mm -hmm. uh, to meet with the President mm -hmm. and Secretaries Kazmin and uh, Del Rosario. So. The visit is meant to push for that uh, arrangement, for that agreement. Well, I think Secretary Hagel wants to highlight the broad nature of our relationship. Uh, we just got through Typhoon Maring, and we're praying for those victims. We may have Typhoon Nando. One mm -hmm. of the primary utilizations of the American military has been helping and assisting the Philippine people uh, during typhoons. Last year, during Typhoon Pablo, it was the U.S. military who was here within seven hours after getting the first call. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we're highlighting is uh, helping the Philippine military continue to be first responders, mm -hmm. increase that. And of course, uh, training programs. We have Balakatan exercises coming up soon. Yeah. We'll have Fiblex next year. Uh, we are the largest provider of military assistance to the Philippines. Been that way and the uh, Philippines receives more aid than 
any country in Asia from the United mm -hmm. States. Uh, so I think the Secretary wants to highlight that and have an opportunity to cement relations with his good friend uh, Secretary Gazmin as well as get to know President Aquino. Although um, the way we look at it, mm -hmm. uh, tell me if I'm, I'm wrong yeah. or correct, uh, the agreement seems to have uh, some uh, support from the Aquino administration. I mean, well, you have you have all these mili Philippine military yeah. officials talking about it, uh, Secretary Gazmin also, right? Well, uh, General Bautista was just in Washington. Yes, yes. Uh, he had a wonderful visit with his counterpart who was here mm -hmm. uh, last year, Chairman Martin Dempsey. Uh, I think one of the things we have to, let, if we can step back for a second, mm -hmm. the first thing we're working on is a visiting forces agreement. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that a visiting forces agreement is something that the Filipino people uh, view as equal and fair, but is also uh, up to both of our country's laws. At the same time, the increased rotational presence mm -hmm. is to help what Secretaries Del Rosario and Gazmin have termed uh, minimum credible defense, which is what the Philippines wants. For years, uh, as you hearken back to the days of Clark and Subic, Philippines took care of its internal defense and the U.S. assisted on external defense. Mm -hmm. Well, the world has changed. Just SODAF has worked closely with the AFP and PNP to help blunt, but not eliminate the terrorists in the, in the South. The Philippines wants to turn that uh, responsibility primarily over to the police. Mm -hmm. And the Philippines now wants to do its own uh, territorial uh, defense. And to do that, you have to increase the Navy, the Coast Guard, fisheries, and the U.S. wants to find ways to assist and help. Uh, we don't want bases. A lot of this will be training, the Balakatan and Fiblex that I mentioned before, uh, increase of training, and clearly uh, trying to help your Navy and, and Air Force increase its capabilities. Uh, okay, can you tell us first, Mr. Ambassador, what is the present uh, arrangement that we have? So you mentioned already, mm -hmm. uh, Kanina, now, the Joint Special Operations Task Force. Yes. Uh, th uh, there is also a, what, what's, what's the best term to use, uh, semi-permanent presence in, in a base, in, 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 in a camp in Zamwanga. Well, the Joint Special Operations Task Force has been there, the mm -hmm. request of the Philippine government, as I said. Yes. Uh, they're there on a rotational basis. The, yeah. our, our Special Operations Forces, our Special Forces. Uh, how about how many at a time, Mr. Ambassador? Well, how we don't like personnel? to talk about numbers, but yeah. all oh, we in general, have, just an estimate. Well, I, I, I would say that the important thing is they work hand in hand with the Filipinos mm -hmm. um, and that this has resulted in a blunting of, of terrorism. Clearly, when you're, yes. when you're there, you have to do some construction. Right. And you have to build, uh, one of the things we're most proud of is we have a, a joint operations center mm -hmm. that all of our troops have used. And you've given me an opportunity because uh, there have been some uh, urban legends that Philippine troops did not have access to uh, the Jasota uh, offices or regions. That's Urban totally, legend. Yeah, it's patently <laughs> yeah. false. Yeah. Uh, we wouldn't do that. We couldn't do that on a Philippine base. Mm -hmm. I was just in Zamboanga uh, not even 10 days ago for the change of command ceremony. I met our new commander and I looked over our uh, joint operations uh, task force, the, the command yeah. center, spoke so, with the yeah, press. So, Mr. Ambassador, the Joint Operations Center mm -hmm. is, uh, without giving away all the details, yeah. so I'm, I'm, I, I understand intelligence yeah. um, requirements, but like, so you have a few buildings built in, in, in Zamboanga. In, right, in the yes, in Zamboanga. yes. And, okay, if you can't tell me like how many people you have here uh, at any given moment, so the, the Special well, Forces me, soldiers me, stay here for like a period uh, of six months, one yes, year? Yes, six months, six, six months, months okay. except their commander who, and mm -hmm. the deputy who's here for a year. But let me be clear, the Philippine government knows exactly how many people are here. Yes. We give the names to the Philippine government. Right, right. Uh, we don't want to... to we just don't publicize it. We don't want to publicize yeah. that. They're here with the approval of the Philippine government. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't want to give the Abu Sayyaf or these other groups uh, mm -hmm. those type of numbers. Uh, but again, this has been a mutually beneficial program. Mm -hmm. uh, it's worked well, and yeah. we'll, we'll see about it in the, in the future. The mm -hmm. important thing is now Philippine government has said, look, we want you to come with this increased rotational presence, 
but only on our terms. We mm -hmm. want to become equal partners, and we only want you here until we are equal partners. And, and we agree with that because we have a long-standing relationship. So we, n we need to help our treaty ally, and that's the way mm -hmm. we're going to do it. Okay. Um, when we had that uh, Joint Special Operations Task Force beginning 2002 mm -hmm. uh, and since then, um, there have been instances like 2002, mm -hmm. 2003, mm -hmm. where you had uh, Filipino um, soldiers going on, on uh, mm -hmm. patrols mm -hmm. or in combat. And sometimes they were accompanied, is that correct, mm -hmm. by uh, U.S. Uh, soldiers who were acting as advisors? Well, I, I wasn't here at that time. All <laughs> I can talk about is when, I, since I've been, I've yeah. been here, our, our soldiers um, are only advisors and trainers. Uh, they're not war fighters. They're not here to get into a, a mm -hmm. kinetic in, uh, environment. They do provide assistance. Uh, uh, last year, the past two years, the Philippine Marines have gotten into dust-ups with Abu Sayyaf. Uh, we provided quietly uh, relief uh, to them. Mm -hmm. um, separately, one of the great things we did when I first got here is we provided over a thousand uh, blood clotting packs to the AFP so soldiers or who are wounded in battle mm -hmm. wouldn't die while they're waiting for their helicopters to come and retrieve them. So mm -hmm. this program uh, that we're doing is broad based. You know, one of the things, um, Pia, I've been to Zamboanga many times and it's a very poor place. What you've seen is whenever a person down there sees a dentist or a veterinarian, most, most likely it's one of our Jesota mm -hmm. dentists or veterinarians. Mm -hmm. We also provide doctors, but there are some doctors there. And we're proud of that program and, this, and the civil part because we understand that um, this uh, is about poverty, lack of opportunity, right. and right. you have to invest in people. Mm -hmm. I understand. Um, it, it, it's, um, it, it's a very good thing to hear about mm. uh, the humanitarian aspect of uh, this program, Mr. Ambassador. But what I'd like to know also is um, in this uh, new mm -hmm. uh, increased uh, or expanded presence mm -hmm. arrangement that uh, both the U.S. and the Philippines are working mm -hmm. on, what exactly is this going to mean? Like, for example, um, if at present you have uh, U.S. soldiers here for a period of six months, will they be staying here longer? Well, again, I think we're focusing on the wrong thing. Jesotif is in, in uh, the south, mm -hmm. okay? An increased rotational presence, where, how that will be worked out, well, that's what, what we're uh, working on now in mm -hmm. uh, the discussions. But it will be what Secretary Gosmin and President Aquino want. Mm -hmm. uh, and how they want that to, uh, to work out. Mm -hmm. What uh, I would look at right now is probably expanding Balakatan and, and Fiblex uh, exercises yeah. um, in that way. They'll, that's totally separate than what Jasodov does. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you expand uh, Balakatan and uh, the other mm -hmm. military exercises, mm -hmm. will that mean then that um, soldiers can go on patrol also? US oh, no, 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 no. These no. are exercises. Yeah. These are exercises that take place at uh, uh, Subic uh, or other parts of the country, primarily in, in the Subic area now, mm -hmm. where you, you train together. You're not on patrols. You're not in no, a kinetic not on environment. Patrols, yeah. This is to really help improve the capabilities of the AFP okay. in the way that President Aquino and Secretary Gazmi would yeah. like them to uh, in increase their capability. But yeah. well, we're not going on patrol. Okay, <laughs> so no, no, yeah, no, no joint patrols, joint operations, no, joint no, conferences, no. joint no, briefings. Well, joint, joint conferences, yes. Obviously. Joint conferences, yes. Yes, and you know, one yeah. of the things that we did last year is the Philippine government invited other ASEAN nations to the opening and closing ceremonies but mm -hmm. also to look at some of the exercises. Mm -hmm. um, you know, once you have interoperability and start talking together and looking down together, you can find other ways because again, uh, between uh, ASEAN states, you have so many typhoons. Mm -hmm. You have environmental challenges. Uh, you have smuggling challenges and all of yeah. these things uh, there, are part lot. of what yeah. they need to do and we'll, we'll assist on on that uh, training, but we're not going to be out on patrol. Yeah, are you going into the, these negotiations, well, both the, the U.S. and Philippine side, because the visiting forces agreement and the mutual defense treaty don't are not very specific, and you need specifics. Both sides need specifics. Well, I think that uh, President Aquino wants to assure the Filipino people that uh, the United States is not seeking bases. 
He wants to assure yeah, that there's an equal yeah. partnership, mm -hmm. uh, that this is not a harken back to the days of Clark and, and mm -hmm. Subic. So what we're, I wouldn't call them negotiations so much as discussions between discussions. friends mm -hmm. and, uh, with the Filipinos in the lead. And we'll, uh, I can't predict the outcome, but I'm sure that it'll be something that increases the uh, capability of the AFP. Mm -hmm. Are you going to get into discussion also about jurisdiction? You know, that, that very, uh, uh, that favorite <laughs> Lance Corporal topic. Smith? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, that's part of the Visiting Forces Agreement. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, clearly, uh, look, I was not here when that happened. Yes. Um, but I want to say we, we are here as guests. We instruct all of our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines to treat Filipino people with, with respect and, mm -hmm. and dignity. Um, what happened uh, with Lance Corporal Smith, uh, these things are against not only human values, but American values. Uh, and those type of things will not be tolerated. We'll have to take a short break, Mr. Ambassador. News.ph will be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching News.ph on the Solar News Channel. I'm Pia Ontiveros. Our guest tonight, U.S. Ambassador Harry Thomas, uh, who's wearing blue socks with <laughs> giraffes on them. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, um, you mentioned uh, the visit of uh, AFP Chief of Staff, uh, General Manny mm -hmm. Bautista, to the U.S., and uh, like you said, he and uh, General Dempsey met there. That They came out with this uh, statement uh, talking about this joint force posture. This statement is meant to drive home the point that uh, we really are going to have uh, an agreement soon on this increased rotational presence? Well, we hope to. Mm -hmm. uh, we hope to. I'm very optimistic. Uh, it's important to get this done. Um, and I'm very glad that uh, General Bautista had such a wonderful visit. But I, I want to be clear, our relationship is so much broader than military and intelligence. You know, uh, today, Pia, when I leave here, I'll meet with our assistant United States trade representative who's here. Mm -hmm. uh, because President Obama has charged us with helping the Philippines uh, increase your economic success and opportunities. Uh, you may know that President Obama chose the Philippines as one of four, only four countries in the world mm -hmm. for a partnership for growth program to really increase uh, your economic opportunities. And I think one of the challenges the AFP has had, although President Aquino has uh, tr tremendously increased its budget, is uh, a, a relatively small budget. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the, another one of the reasons why we provide aid to the military. But at the end of the day, um, this is about helping the Philippines uh, increases strength so that uh, no country would uh, take you for granted or think that you're weak or could be attacked. No country will take you for granted. Let's talk about China, okay. <laughs> Mr. Ambassador. Um, although that joint vision statement talks about, and then we quote, a rules-based approach in mm -hmm. resolving competing claims in, mm -hmm. maritime, area, in maritime areas, mm -hmm. So definitely, of course, the U.S. will not be a part. I mean, no country no one would like to be part of any shooting mm. war no, no. in Scarborough Shore, for example. No, but no. Um, would you agree that an increased rotational presence is uh, uh, sure to serve as a very strong deterrent? Uh, we hope so. Mm -hmm. um, but this is not about China. This is about mm -hmm. the Philippines. Uh, Philippines, who is our strategic ally, the Philippines, who has so many of its citizens living in the United States and yes. being productive and partners, and so many of its citizens, former and descendants in the U.S. military, yes. and uh, that is what we're trying to uh, work on and improve. Mm -hmm. um, clearly, we're very concerned about the South China Sea or Western Philippine Sea, uh, as Generals Dempsey and Bautista said. Uh, we have to keep those lanes open. Uh, it's a tremendous amount of trade that goes through there. Uh, we, we very much support, as Secretary Kerry has often said, the code of conduct between ASEAN and China. Mm -hmm. But there are many claimant states. Right. There are cross claims, and those things need to be done. But all of this should be done in a peaceful manner. 
Mm -hmm. um, when we talk about uh, technical assistance, Mr. Mm -hmm. Ambassador, mm -hmm. uh, although I, I understand uh, mm -hmm. and everybody knows how broad uh, mm -hmm. the scope of the relationship is, but uh, I want to go back to the military. Sure. That, that's my favorite topic. <laughs> <laughs> it so, is? Yeah. Did you want yes. to go to PMA or West no, no, Point no. or something? <laughs> no, 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 no. That's another long story for another episode. <laughs> but anyway, well, Mr. Ambassador, so technical assistance meaning like what? Um, intelligence, surveillance? Uh, assistance, equipment, C can you be a little bit more specific, like, you know, what's it going to be like now mm -hmm. when we have this increased rotational presence? Well, again, that still has to be worked out by the Philippine government and, and, and the U.S. You government. You really don't know, <laughs> <laughs> or you'd rather not talk about it. Well, it's not, it's not that. When negotiations mm -hmm. or discussions are going on, you have to keep those things private to, mm -hmm. to work out. But again, these things will be reported. We believe in mm -hmm. full transparency. Mm -hmm. uh, because we can't have something that uh, Filipino people uh, do not like or do not respect. And same thing with the United States, mm -hmm. because this is involves our, our, our troops and also our tax money. Uh, we want to make sure that's well spent. Um, look, when you look at the broad scope of our military training, we send lots of Filipino uh, military to the United States for educational training. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have naval exercise, we have the Marines exercises, we also have a Pacific Partnership where our hospital ship comes here every mm -hmm. other year uh, to help uh, the poor. And one of the things that I was most proud of when we went down there, our doctors asked for Philippine doctors and dentists, and we were told there were only about three were willing to come in General Santos. Mm -hmm. The day I came, over 25 Filipino doctors and dentists showed up, mm -hmm. and they were able to work together. So it's, it's an extremely uh, broad um, uh, program. But again, I'm, I'm being very transparent with you when I'm saying it'll, it'll, it'll focus on training during Balakatan mm -hmm. and, and Fiblex and increasing capabilities. Mm -hmm. So can you still like, tell us mm -hmm. how is it going to be different? I mean, you know, just give us a little... A little peek into it. How is it going to be different now if you have this uh, new agreement? Well, it will, it, you know, this would allow uh, increase, and I'm not sure what number, <laughs> of American forces mm -hmm. to train uh, Filipino forces uh, on a more consistent basis. And that mm -hmm. training and where that, the kind of training and where that will take place is up to uh, President Aquino and Secretary uh, Gazmin, mm -hmm. um, and all of that has to be worked out. Yeah, okay. But I, I guess we can expect uh, a few more ships, U.S. ships, a few more U.S. aircraft. You know, I'm glad you mentioned that because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have between 50 and 80 uh, ships that come in um, to Subic, Manila, mm -hmm. Cebu, Ilo, Ilo every year. And most of these are port calls. Mm -hmm. But in the last year, we started uh, for the first time in, in many years, as you say, uh, repairing ships at Subic. And uh, we increased that amount this year. So the ships being repaired at Subic are being done by Filipino employees, or Filipino corporations, and that is providing jobs opportunity to uh, the Philippine public. Mm -hmm. uh, that is an important part because these, uh, this will help uh, spur your economic growth. Just as a ship visits, because our sailors are very young, uh, mm -hmm. when we have uh, a carrier visit into Manila, uh, that's about three and a half to four million U.S. dollars mm -hmm. that, goes in, that comes into Manila's economy. Yeah. Um, they'll, they'll go to every place from uh, Hard Rock Cafe to TGI Fridays, but uh, you'd be surprised how many lechons they order mm -hmm. because so mm -hmm. many of them are Filipino or Americans and a few go to Jollibee's also. <laughs> Jollibee, yeah. not McDonald's. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, uh, this is a good time as any, of course, to have this uh, increased rotation presence. Mm -hmm. Lalo na, because we have all these, uh, we, we just had all these recent bombings. Yes, the Oro, yes, yeah. na. So I guess this is uh, also a, a major cause of, major concern for you. For the U.S., right? Well, I think it is all, for all of us. Uh, mm -hmm. When we saw those IEDs, uh, mm -hmm. we do not know whether that was political or terrorist-related. Uh, uh, we hope that um, the Philippine uh, 
military and government will find out who did this mm -hmm. and that those people will be brought to justice. Mm -hmm. But we don't know at this time. But mm -hmm. it is a concern, sure. But with the increased rotational presence, then uh, we can expect uh, uh, a lot more uh, support from the U.S. in terms of going after uh, the suspects. Well, again, uh, Joint Special Operations Task Force is already providing a lot of that training and assistance. Mm -hmm. If the Philippine military decides they would like more training in Zamboanga, we can look at that as, as a request. Mm -hmm. um, I think that most of the things that they're going to be looking at is amphibious, improving the Coast Guard, improving mm -hmm. the Navy, yeah. also uh, helping the Air Force. Uh, those are the things that they have initially told us that they will be looking at, but clearly uh, we want to, it's in both of our nation's interests and I think global interests to stop terrorism. Mm. Improving the Navy, improving the Coast Guard. Uh, just a few days ago, um, or yesterday, uh, or the other day, there was this news item about uh, uh, a U.S. firm uh, getting the 792 million maritime security deal? Mm -hmm. Raytheon. Raytheon, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes. Uh, that is for Coast Watch South, um, and that is going to be run, I believe, by um, the former FOIC, Admiral Palma. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are uh, pleased that an American firm won that uh, contract. And that's mm -hmm. basically to help the Philippine government uh, with uh, situational awareness of your coast. You situational to, awareness, yeah. so monitoring. Can, uh, sure, yeah. so you can see who's coming, where, and why. Mm -hmm. um, just had this incident with Taiwan that's behind you. Um, you have a lot of what uh, smugglers using these uh, Volvo Pintas. Mm -hmm. uh, we've provided, uh, through our Justice Department and military, about six ribs of these 40, 40 foot boats that go after smugglers, but that's only yeah. in Puerto Princesa. Okay. And yeah. we have over 7,000 islands. We need a, a situational, much Situational, just situational awareness. Yes, like yeah. what if, what about apprehension? Will this, will Raytheon well, also help with that? No, the, I mean, you the, know, we don't have much of a Coast well, Guard anyways. Well, the, remember the, the, uh, what I just spoke about, mm -hmm. the, uh, the Coast Watch South that will look at where people are, that situational mm -hmm. awareness. But the six ribs that we provided to uh, the PNP will help, and they are, they are helping catch smugglers, mm -hmm. but you have s over 7,000 islands. Uh, yeah. It's not nearly impossible to catch all this, this smugglers, but that's a, normally a police action or a BFAR action uh, to apprehend smugglers. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And we, we, uh, we think that one of the things we're uh, really looking at is how can our other allies assist the Philippine uh, Coast Guard and BFAR and I think that you're going to see some of that uh, going concrete where there are other nations in the region, other democracies helping to build up your Coast Guard, mm -hmm. uh, your Navy and your, your Air Force. Like which nations? I think that uh, you know, as a kid, we used to say, that's for me to know and you to find out, but I'm just joking. <laughs> but I think yeah. you, can, you can look at other democracies in the region who, yeah. who help the Philippines. Yeah. Okay. How do you see this um, MILF, uh, the, the draft agreement uh, mm -hmm. signed with the MILF last uh, October and um, how um, the talks now, the annexes are going? Well, you know, Is it looking good? I think uh, this has been a wonderful achievement. Uh, uh, Marvick did a wonderful job mm -hmm. uh, before he went off to the uh, Supreme Court. President Aquino, uh, this may be uh, his legacy, this framework mm -hmm. agreement. This is something we, we support. We're not directly involved, mm -hmm. uh, but we work with the Asia Foundation to support this. The, our British and other European colleagues work with the Philippine government, but this has been a tremendous achievement. Uh, Philippines work closely with Malaysia yeah. also in getting this. Okay. And you know what? Um, <clears throat> as, a, as a diplomat, you rarely have days that you'll be able to tell your grandchildren about but uh, I was at a friend's birthday party, mm -hmm. and I got to sit next to President Aquino for several hours on a Saturday night, 
as he was getting reports on this on this agreement when they when they finally sealed it really? and uh, he would get up and uh, mm -hmm. go outside and we think wow they have an agreement but he was just taking a coke break you know and then he'd come back and for several hours this uh, during this birthday party uh, I sat with him and just mm -hmm. listened uh, with his cabin several of his cabinet members and uh, uh, he was determined to get this done and mm -hmm. it really increased my admiration yeah. uh, for for him and then uh, he invited uh, the diplomatic corps to the palace mm -hmm. uh, for the signing agreement uh, with Prime Minister Najib and so many of the MILF leaders who said they never thought they would be in the palace. Yeah, Are you That's as great. hopeful, Mr. Ambassador, sorry to, to cut you short, yeah. about uh, an agreement with the New People's Army or, you know, like they said, let's wait until after 2016? Well, I think that's going to take some time uh, <laughs> with the New People's Army, but they and they are, as we say, you might want to call them New People Armies in in in, in several in several ways. Uh -huh. uh, but I think that uh, is another area that President Aquino is devoting a significant amount of time and energy. Secretary mm -hmm. Yama spends a lot of uh, time on this, and this is this is important. Mm -hmm. um, Would you agree that? Uh, the the best approach would be localized peace talks. Well, I don't think that's for me to decide. I think that's mm. for the Philippine government. No, strategically to speaking, you know. I mean, well, anyway, the, the new ambassador who's coming in uh, is going to help with counterinsurgency. I don't think that's his decision. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, I, I think I'm sure he has, we, an, he has we, some you know, contribution uh, to make. Pierre, yeah. as you said, uh, uh, this was a former colony. Mm -hmm. This was a place um, uh, where we had bases. This was. Uh, country that we supported uh, uh, doing a dictatorship, uh, we have to be very careful mm -hmm. to uh, leave domestic issues uh, to the Philippine people and uh, we don't get involved. We'll mm -hmm. assist in ways that uh, we can if our laws and our budgets allow us to, to do that, uh, but uh, we tread very lightly. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador Harry Thomas. We wish you all the luck in the world. Where are you going next? I'm going off to Arizona, of all Arizona. places. Oh, ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat. Sir, thank you so much uh, for ingat. joining us. And thank you for watching. I'm Pia Ontiveros. This is News.ph. See you again next Wednesday. Good night.